Hello everyone and welcome to the season 2 finale of My GM in WWE 2K23. We are here for WrestleMania once again. We're in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma for this season's conclusion. We had to book a backstage brawl to get an injury rehab 3 card. Of course we're going to do that. Um, last time I was a bit uh, befuddled by what to do for the power card situation, but I figured I, even with the double cost, I went ahead and I picked up uh, a Superstars GM for raising the Superstars selected morale, and it was a little over the budget, so I decided to play a free, a, a free crew booking. Um, to just to like just give us enough budget to be able to afford it because I that's a power card that I don't think I've ever I might have gotten once but it's always expensive so uh, I figured it was worth grabbing that one and in exchange for it was going to be one of the free logistics booking and the stage building crew because like you know we're going to be getting two special effects upgrades next season we're going to get one advertisement upgrade so I figured I'll use it on the stage building crew. You know, either way, it's like we're gonna have more expensive options in other areas in the future, so I thought that was the best bet. Uh, save the free arena bookings for another time. Needed to be just a, just enough, just a little bit over um, being in the negative. Still, no Chuck McWagon. It wasn't meant to be. He took a vacation for season two or went on an excursion. You know, he's in Japan. Maybe he went to Mexico. Maybe he's going all over the world, traveling the world, and really riding off the back of a huge Universal Championship win. But this isn't the story of Chuck McWagon this season. This season, it's the story of Clubberella, as she's going to take on Asuka in an Iron Woman match. Uh, these are all stipulation matches because it's free, so why not? Um, the opener is a TLC again. It got a five star last time. It's Raquel's specialty. I figured there was no reason to do anything else for that match. Ricochet Gunther is the backstage brawl that Triple H wanted. That should do, you know, that should do barn uh, uh, words. That should be good. Uh, TLC mid card, R Truth and Happy Corbin. Might as well wrap this feed up as well. R Truth also has a TLC specialty, so we'll get that one in before the main event. Hell in a Cell Tag Team Championship match. Bobby Lashley, an MVP of the Hurt Business, taking on Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, the Street Profits. Well, you know, it's a Hell in a Cell. I'm looking at the popularity. That's not the highest popularity. Hmm, maybe... It's a level four rivalry. It should be fine. I don't think the popularity should be too huge of a concern. I think we'll still be good. It's like, even if the main event is slightly underperforming. It's WrestleMania and we're in the lead by 10 billion fans. I, it's fine. We'll be good. It's a hell in a cell. We got two TLCs, a backstage brawl, an Iron Man. Uh, I went for an Iron Man because I feel like that's, there aren't many matches that I haven't done yet. Uh, I thought about doing a steel cage, uh, but I'm, I don't remember which had the higher rating. So I thought like Iron Man match, it's something different. We've done tables, extreme rolls, steel cage. We've done pretty much all of these other matches except maybe a submission. I don't think I've showcased one of those, uh, but we'll go Iron Man for this one. Also just trying to throw darts and see like what are their match specialties if I can find it. Uh, might not find it, should still be fine. I, I think it's gonna be a good show regardless. And I think I flipped these two for popularity reasons, but Honestly, like any one of these could be, it's kind of hard to pin down which is gonna be the highest drawing match, except for this one, because they have the highest popularity. And like, that's, that's kind of all I have a read on, honestly. Nothing else really to say, uh, aside from, you know, just looking at the power cards, there's the free crew booking that I used. That's, that's what we were dealing with. Uh, maybe I can try to get Shelton and Kevin Owens in the draft. Uh, I have not fully decided what the keepers are going to be. I'm thinking Bobby Lashley might be likely because he is the Universal Champion. Um, 
And then it could be like any of the like Roxanne, Raquel, Cleverella, Asuka group because, you know, I feel like I've been putting all, like mainly I'm thinking like Roxanne or Cleverella, but also Asuka is a mainstay. So we got a lot of potential options. But we've confirmed the book. Let's get into it. Roxanne Perez, Raquel Rodriguez in a TLC. Oh, Roxanne win or Roxanne falls short. And Raquel wins again in her specialty for a five-star rating. Uh, Kevin Owens doing a charity promo. I don't really know what else we could have done for promos this week. No reason to do advertising. Might as well just try to boost up our fans more. Um, I did do self-promos for EO and Dakota Kai because they're just real low on popularity. And if I want to try to snag him in the draft again, I don't want them to be, like, having them be cheaper would be nice, but I don't want them to be, like, too, like, in the 50s or something. Uh, Ricochet, Gunther, backstage brawl, and Gunther wins again. No luck for Ricochet. Gunther is just way too strong. And that got four and a half. And now we're going to get to our showcase match. Asuka versus Cleverella. It's an Iron Woman match, and it had to be this one that I showcased, right? Like, Asuka, the SmackDown mainstay, the workhorse, can she maintain her spot at the, at the top as the Empress, or is the up and cunner, uh, up, up, I can't speak, up and comer, Cleverella gonna get the win? Let's just get to it before I stumble over myself more. In WWE 2K22, it was Chuck Mc, or it was, I'm already ruined, I already ruined it. In W2K22, it was Triton. Last year, season one, it was Chuck McWagon. This year, the rookie, the rags to riches story, it's Cloverella. Will it be the veteran or the rookie? Will it be the newcomer or the workhorse? Asuka, Cloverella. We got 15 minutes. Iron Woman match. Whoever scores the most falls wins. Truly a potential for a changing of the guard here but also very much so a trial by fire for Cloverella as Asuka, this time last year, she and her former tag team partner, the Glamazon Beth Phoenix, went in and reclaimed their SmackDown Women's Tag Team Championships. But this year, Asuka, no title on the line. It's just one-on-one, -on -one, no partner. She's all on her own, and she is looking to maintain her place as a SmackDown mainstay. And truly, no one else has worked more matches with er, worked more matches than Asuka. I checked; she's worked 34 matches. I think the next closest was, I think it was r Truth at 33. But r Truth, half of those matches were in NXT, uh, and then I think the next was maybe like Shelton had 31. Uh, so no one on SmackDown has worked as many matches as the Empress Asuka. And so she's got a lot of experience, not just on the blue brand, but in wrestling in general. Here in the States, over in Japan, Asuka, she's been there, she's done it all. Cleverella, though, right now, the one holding the gold, one half of the SmackDown Women's Tag Team Champions. She's looking to become, well, really just take Asuka's place. She's looking to become the new SmackDown mainstay, the new workhorse. And she wants the title that Asuka has held, but she has yet to, the SmackDown Women's Championship. But to do that, she's gonna have to get through Asuka tonight, here at WrestleMania, the grandest stage of them all. As Asuka hooks the arm for a suplex right there. And now getting in some trash talk, but is not gonna have it. Clubarella applies a bear hug, and the Empress, I don't think she's gonna tap out, but Clubarella dealing some Important damage here in the early stages of this one. As we are two and a half minutes into this one, still over 12 minutes to go. No one really seems to have the upper hand at this point, still going back and forth as Cleverella with the splash. The running splash connects, and now she picks up a kendo stick, takes a swing, but Asuka, no, oh, she got her that time, but Asuka's still on her feet. Asuka just eating these kendo stick shots. And now, Striking away at Clubberella, looking to return the favor, but no, Clubberella knocks it away, and Clubberella Uranagi side slam. And I guess this is a no disqualification uh, Iron Man match, because I mean they used the Kendo stick and no one got disqualified. 
A uh, bit of uh, malfunction at the junction there. Asuka tried to knock Clubberella down off the top rope. Clubberella was like, okay, I'm just going to jump off then. And they still go back and forth. Asuka off the ropes. And the back elbow delivered by Clubberella. Asuka looking a bit dazed out there. Clubberella again building a full head of steam off the ropes. And the splash once again. And now she hooks the leg on Asuka. One count, two, but a kick out. Gonna take more than that to put the Empress down for three. There's Clubberella now looking to drag her to the center of the ring. Maybe was looking to apply a submission, try to keep Asuka away from those ropes. But Asuka back to her feet, knocks Clubberella off of hers and not letting her get back to him. Oh, as there's the knee or like a hip to the side of Clubberella's head there. She kips right back up to her feet, but straight into an octopus stretch. Straight into an octopus stretch by Asuka. And I don't know if Clubberella will submit, but again, valuable damage being done here. Oh, trips the leg out. Drop toe hold counter there by Clubberella and the running, no. She went for a running clothesline. Asuka caught her and another suplex. Another suplex dropping her down onto the arm. Clubberella rolls to the outside. Asuka will join her there as well. Gets the full running start and the clothesline to the back of the head. Follows it up with an elbow now. Now, just because there's no disqualification does not mean this is a false Count Anywhere affair, but this being an Iron Woman match, if you get a fall by count out, it counts. And of course, still 10 minutes to go in this one, so an early fall, the early advantage could be the difference maker. You know, this isn't this isn't the Shawn Michaels Bret Hart 60 minute classic. Or for a more modern example, the MJF Brian Danielson affair. As Asuka off the top rope with the elbow drop to the back. So a bit of a bit of a more rapid fire uh, pace to this one. As Asuka now, she's trapped her. She's trapped her. The Asuka lock is cinched in. No rope break in sight for Clubberella. Is she gonna have to give it up? Clubberella. Nine and a half minutes to go, and there certainly is the question of do you tap out now and try to try to make up the difference going forward? As she's really fighting it, Clubberella. Clubberella gets out of it. She breaks the hold. No submission just yet for Asuka. As Clubberella, backbreaker delivered. And another one. And then just tossing her away. Clubberella showcasing some power right there. Boot to the midsection as we cross the six minute mark in this match. Dominator. Dominator by Clubberella. Hook of the leg on Asuka. One. Two, no. Kick out by the Empress. This match will continue without a fall. It's Clubberella now. What is she looking for? Asuka stumbling to her feet, but Clubberella just grabs her from the ground and tosses her violently with a German suplex. Now going to work on that leg. Every bit of damage counts in a matchup like this. As Clubberella now picks her up to her feet. Asuka gonna get whipped into the ring. As we approach eight minutes to go in this match, another kendo stick being introduced the, to this one. Oh, but Clubberella left herself open. Asuka running hip attack. Running hip attack connects and wasting no time. Asuka looking to put her out. As no, no, Clubberella. Clubberella reverses. Clubberella hangs on. And now Asuka, Asuka lifted up there. Oh, ro no, roll through, sunset flip, sunset flip. One, two, three, that's a pinfall right there. Asuka catches Clubberella off guard with the roll up. And the sunset flip scores the first fall. That is a devastating blow to the confidence of Clubberella, but still seven and a half minutes to go. Plenty of time left to make up the difference. But not if Asuka stays on the attack like this. As she hooks the arm, hooks the leg, spine buster delivered. She's really been targeting that arm. Gonna make it all the more difficult for Clubberella to avoid tapping out to the Asuka lock. As now Asuka goes back out for the kendo stick. It's Clubberella out on her feet right now. Oh, the, cl the, the clubbing blow with the kendo stick straight to the face. And again, and again now, Asuka just lighting her up here. Asuka looking to make a statement out of Clubberella tonight, but Clubberella with a running clothesline. 
truly a clubbing blow right there from the up and comer. No, didn't happen. She went for the kick. Asuka countered with a forearm. But it's back and forth. Clubberella now. Irish whip off the ropes. Asuka comes back. Pa, the spine buster. Spine buster delivered. But she's not done. Clubberella staying on the attack. And truly a showcase of power here. The gorilla press. Driving Asuka down to the canvas. We are approaching six minutes remaining in this Iron Woman match. And Clubberella looking to score her first fall. Boot to the midsection. She's got her up. And that's going to be a last ride powerbomb. Is that the same? She's got the same moveset as Chuck McWagon. Oh, but she didn't get her. Asuka kicked out of Cloverella's finishing move. And I have to wonder, does every local enhancement, talent, local enhancement talent have that exact same moveset? Do they happen to just be the same class, maybe? Maybe, like... Everyone in a class has the same moves. I'm not sure. But Asuka, the knee to the face, the kick to the to the side of the head, and now hooks the leg on Clubberella. Two count. Oh, and that might do it. Only five and a half minutes to go. Oh my god, yeah, no. Clubberella's got no chance. Because as soon as she gets up off the second fall, Asuka locks in. The Asuka lock again, and Clubberella submits. That's now a 3-0 victory, or a 3-0 lead. For Asuka here. And this is starting to look ugly, folks. Clubber, Asuka trying to go for the cover. She's trying to make a statement by pinning her as many times as she can. And she gets her again. Clubberella still out of it from the kicks and the, the Asuka lock. So it's 4-0 Asuka. I don't know if there's any coming back from that. But Clubberella's going to try. Steel chair in hand. Asuka not letting it happen. Oh, you're kidding me. Not again. This is, this is hard to watch, folks. Asuka again applies the Asuka lock. And that's another submission. 5-0 Asuka. This is hard to watch, folks. <laughs> and she's going to go for the pin again. Is she going to get her again, too? Yep, okay. Well, if anything else happens, I'll show you. But I think I'm just going to let this match play out on its own. <laughs> Is Clubberella going to hook the leg on Asuka now? Can she get a fall? No, she can't. Oh, man. This one very quickly went from competitive and close to just pure domination from the Empress. Still three minutes to go in this one. Big boot delivered by Clubberella there. And uh, I don't think this is a, a, a performance that will inspire a lot of confidence. I'm not sure... I'm not, this This might be the deciding factor in whether or not Clubberella returns for another season. I mean, if she had put up a good performance against Asuka here, really could have secured herself a contract, but 6 0, oh, two and a half minutes to go. Maybe she can get at least one fall in here, but it's not looking pretty. If she goes to the top row, but Asuka not even, oh my goodness! Asuka rolled out of the ring and was like, yeah, you're not going to hit me with that. And Clubberella said, well, if I'm not going to win this match, I'm at least going to make a WrestleMania moment. And immediately, no hesitation, dives right to the outside. Elbow drop to the face, and now the steel chair shots. She's going to lay it in, the punishment. And right to the skull as well. Two minutes to go. I don't think Clubberella even cares about a victory anymore. She's just furious that this match went the way that it has she's just i'm not sure exactly what she's trying to do just try to inflict punishment perhaps try to make it so asuka can't come back for season three but uh yeah i mean clubberella not much else she can really do at this point she's down six falls a minute and a half to go there's no time for a comeback in this one at most she can try for one pinfall and that's probably about all she's gonna get oh it was the gut rinse the gut wrench delivered there. Asuka now stumbling to her feet. 1-16 to go. Clubberella was looking for a, a crushing blow there, but didn't happen. Oh, and she might tap out again. Asuka adding insult to injury, looking for one more fall here. I can't... Okay, well, she tapped out. The ref did move, so I was able to see the submission. That's now 7 nothing, Asuka. And... Yeah, no one's going to take that spot from her. Asuka will continue to hold her status as the workhorse of SmackDown. 
the veteran, the empress. Oh, look at that. A, uh, like a sit out, um, I forget what that move is called, but she hooks the leg and that's eight nothing. How much more of a decisive victory is Asuka gonna try to make this? There's still 30 seconds left. Is she gonna go for nine? She's got a steel chair now, Cloverella. I mean, if I were Cloverella, I would just quit now. I'd just walk up the ramp, take as many count outs as, as it takes for time remaining. I mean, this is, this is just humiliating at this point. Is the kindo stick shot now just taunting her? No, I don't think she's gonna go for the ninth. She's just gonna celebrate. Take a, prem a premature celebration, but she had all the confidence, all the reason to do it. Eight nothing. Asuka, a dominating showcase of her abilities here at WrestleMania. And this truly could be the dawn of a new era for Asuka on SmackDown. She's a heel now and a dominant one at that. Who who can stop her? Well, there you go, folks. Five stars, Clubberella. Just no chance whatsoever. TLC match, Happy Corbin versus R-Truth. And Corbin finally picks up a win. He was like 0-6 or something. So at least he gets a win in, in the final moments of the season. Uh, excellent self-promo for Dakota Kai. And I feel like we had a, about enough time on that Iron Woman match. I'm just gonna go ahead and simulate the main. Uh, Cause like, I mean, it's a tag match in the Hell in a Cell, but I'm not, I feel like I'm worried it'll go on forever. So we'll just simulate Street Profits against the Hurt Business. And they go out with a win. The Street Profits, five stars, walk out as the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. So now we go to Raw, Charlotte Flair, Gets the win over Zoe Stark in a four and a half. So, so much for Zoe Stark picking up a win in the end. It, it just didn't happen. It was pure domination from Charlotte. You know, she's Monday Night Raw's Asuka. Uh, Mid-card, Danielle Wallace and Battleship Brittany. I'm, I don't think that's gonna... Two stars, yeah. Uh, call out for Logan Paul. I guess they're gonna try to sign them back and keep that feud alive. Uh, Masse, Noam Dar. The win goes to Masse. And I've got three and a half. It's a it's a new rivalry right at the end. Maybe they'll try to draft him again. Uh, maybe I can try to interfere so they don't. Uh, JBL Ilya Dragunov, last man standing. Ah, of course JBL had to get his win in before the end of the season. He's not gonna go out on a loss. And then main event tables match: Shayna Baszler, Nikki Ash, and the win goes to Shayna for four and a half stars. Pretty underwhelming show for Raw. Uh, what's gonna happen for... Yeah, also it said they were in the Raw arena, but, and not WrestleMania, so I guess they didn't, they weren't able to book the big stadium. Uh, I swear I thought in the previous year, it looked like one of them had booked it out of the high school gym, but uh, maybe I was like looking at it wrong that time. Anyway, uh-huh, uh-huh, a five-star legendary draw. Well, that's certainly one way to open up Mania. Ronda Rousey, Natalia, TLC, the win goes to Ronda. And it looks like there was a run in there. Uh, got four stars. They did all those promos to build up to Cedric Braun and then it's not even on the show. Dana, Carmella. I got four and a half and the rivalry's complete. So Carmella, she lost at Mania last year but picks up a win this year. Uh, Ivar versus Dominic Mysterio. It's another win for Ivar. And that one got five stars. So let's see how the main event is gonna do. Can it outperform, uh, can Rey Mysterio outperform his son Dominic? It's Hell in a Cell once again, Gable and Mysterio. And that's a win for Gable, four and a half. So the Extreme Rules mid card match outdid it. We're gonna probably have some injuries, but it's the end of the season. What does it really matter? Five, 4.55, 4.55. 5. Yeah, no one was close. We took that pretty handily. Yo, no one got injured. Let's go. How about, oh, Masse out for five weeks. Not that it matters. I'm surprised no one got injured for for SmackDown. I thought for sure there'd be at least one, but not, and again, it's like not that it matters, but oh, hey, Asuka's a natural at Iron Man matches. So we finally figured out what her match specialty is. Uh, 145 for plus 304,000. We are over the 5 million mark. 
Raw had a 111 plus 175,000, which is significantly less than what we got. So yeah, pretty decisive win for us. NXT a 128 for plus 238,000. I think that's going to be enough to surpass Raw, but it's not going to surpass us. Earn 10 mil in lifetime revenue. Okay, so that's our sixth trophy. Uh, injury rehab three for the commissioner goal. Uh, no, so NXT has not quite yet surpassed Raw, but they're going to do it next season at this rate. Because, uh, yeah, they're pretty close. But no one's close to us. Season 2 pretty handily goes to SmackDown. All right, we got the world's worst boss. Most promises broken? Really? Interesting. I feel like we were pretty good about promises, so interesting slammy to get. Most cash spent on power cards. I feel like I spent a lot on power cards, but it is what it is. The fleet of foot, most cruiser superstars on their roster. And it looks like the Slammy Awards change each year, so I'm assuming they just do it so that every brand gets one. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sure how the how the GM Slammies work. But yeah, um, oh, well, it doesn't show us with the 6 out of 10, but we have it. Um, best match card quality, S. Uh, best average show quality, C. Oh my god, we have everything. Highest total profits, most new fans, highest average show quality during PLEs, most rivalries completed. Yeah, we, we were number one at all of that. Um... So let's see. The, this is the stuff that, that I'm interested in. Uh, Gunther, most matches won with 12. 12 is a surprisingly low number, but uh, congrats to Gunther. Uh, highest average match rating was Bobby Lashley with four. Cleverella went up 53 popularity. Lashley was booked in 18 matches, which was more than Asuka for the season. Um, and then Shelton spent five weeks injured, which was the most for us. Uh, Monday Night Raw, Charlotte won 13 matches. Logan Paul went up 48 popularity. Uh, Charlotte was in 19 total matches. Uh, wow, Piper Niven, 13 weeks injured, and her high highest average match rating was four. 13 weeks. That is a lot. And yeah, 18 rivalries completed compared to eight. Our revenue is a ways higher. Our fans are a ways higher. Um... NXT though, their revenue, yeah, their revenue is pretty, pretty freaking high. Um, Ronda Rousey won 12 matches. Uh, Ali Brawler went up 67 popularity. Dana Brooke was booked in 19 matches. Ray was 11 weeks injured. So uh, overall, it's like NXT had most popularity gained. Raw had the most matches won. Uh, tie for booked. And then, yeah, Piper with 13 weeks, but Ray, 11 weeks, that's still a lot. And NXT completed nine rivalries, so... Yeah, it's just none of them are even close to, to what we're doing. And then I believe up next is gonna be the Keepers, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it for today's episode. That's, that does it for Season 2. Join me next time for Season 3, where we will once again be redrafting the rosters, and I will decide our Keepers next time, because... The way I did it last time made it so that like this episode was particularly long and the other one was short, so mix it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, so thank you for joining me for the second season. I hope you'll see me for season three, where I'm pretty confident the series is going to wrap up in season three. So uh, stay tuned for the redraft and for all the future stuff coming out, and I will see you next time.